السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. This is Dr. Shmuh Salama. Thank you all for joining us today for this presentation on catheter-associated urinary tract infection surveillance. So throughout this presentation, I'll be referring to catheter-associated urinary tract infection as CAUTI. As an outline of this presentation, we will first start with a brief introduction with the definition of CAUTI. Then we will uh, mention the impact of CAUTI on patients and healthcare systems, followed by CAUTI risk factors, CAUTI criteria and exceptions, filling CAUTI rates and uh, urinary catheter utilization. And of course, we'll uh, discuss the CAUTI prevention tools, which uh, include the bundles and how to use these bundles in the healthcare setting. Lastly, we will con conclude this presentation by the take home messages and conclusion. As we all know, patient safety components include procedure-associated module, device-associated module, and others. Today, we are explaining and discussing one of the device-associated module, which is CAUTI. Let's begin by defining CAUTI and understanding why surveillance is crucial in the development of healthcare-associated infections. CAUTI refers to symptomatic urinary tract infection, or asymptomatic bacteriomic urinary tract infection in a patient who had an indwelling urinary catheter. This type of catheter has to be in place for at least three days and in place at the date of event or the day before. It's important to understand the concept and purpose of indwelling catheters. Uh, it is a drainage tube that is inserted into the urinary bladder through the urethra, as left in place and connected to a drainage bag. These devices are also called fully catheters. Indwelling urethral catheters that are used for intermittent or continuous irrigations are included in the CAUTI surveillance. However, some types are not included. These, these uh, include the condoms, straight in and out catheters, nephrostomy tubes, ileo conduits, and suprapubic catheters. CAUTI have a significant impact on both patients and healthcare systems. It's the most common type of healthcare-associated infections, accounting for 30% of health-associated infections reported to NHSN, estimated to be more than 560,000 healthcare-associated infections, counties annually. It is associated with an increased morbidity and mortality, estimated 13,000 attributable deaths annually, and being the leading cause of secondary bloodstream infection with approximately 10% mortality. And it leads to the excess length of a stay, on average of uh, two to four days. It causes an increased cost of uh, 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 billion per year. And it can lead to the unnecessary ant antimicrobial use. That's why preventing CAUTI through effective surveillance strategies is essential for minimizing these impacts and improving patient outcomes while reducing the healthcare costs. Several risk factors may contribute to the development of CAUTI. These include the presence of urinary catheter, of course, and the prolonged duration of catheterization, the lower professional training of the inserter, the non-compliance with aseptic technique during the insertion, and not maintaining a closed drainage system, and lastly, lastly, placing the drainage tubing above the level of the bladder. So, CAUTI surveillance methodology is very similar to other device-associated infection surveillance. It involves an active approach, meaning that we have to actively monitor CAUTI events. Uh, it is patient-based, requiring accurate, docu accurate documentation of both catheter-related details and patient symptoms, and not only relying on urine uh, culture results. Additionally, it's a pr prospective, which means that we need to start the surveillance while the patient is still in the hospital and catheterized. We cannot do this retrospectively. Moreover, it's a priority directed and targeted meaning that surveillance efforts are concentrated on specific areas of the hospital, such as ICUs, rather than attempting to cover the entire hospital. 
Several specific changes regarding county criteria should be noted. The first change is that the urine culture must exceed 10 to the power of 5 colony forming units per milliliter. Any culture less than this number should not be considered as part of the county definition. Secondly, bacteria are the only accepted causative organisms, so we should exclude any urine cultures that are positive for yeast, mold, dimorphic fungi, or parasites. Let's say, for example, a patient uh, had a, a positive urine culture of a specific bacterium alongside candida, for example. In this case, it can, it can be considered as county. Urinary catheter tips should not be cultured and are not acceptable for the diagnosis of a urinary tract infection. Lastly, there, are, there is no longer a requirement to examine urine analysis results as they are no longer part of the criteria. Also, core temperature assessment is unnecessary as reco any recorded temperature will do. Here, you can appreciate uh, some examples of the organisms that are not uh, acceptable for county. Mixed flora refers to more than two species in the same culture. So, for catheters that are removed and reinserted, a specific protocol applies. If an indwelling urinary catheter is removed and reinserted within less than a full calendar day, the day count continues uninterrupted. However, if the patient remains without a urinary catheter for at least one complete calendar day, a new day count will begin. Uh, here is an example of a urinary catheter that is removed and reinserted within one calendar day. It was removed on day 5 and reinserted on day 6. On the other hand, patient B had his uh, Foley catheter removed on day 5, which is uh, April the 2nd. Then he had one full uh, calendar day or one day gap and had his uh, Foley replaced on the 4th of April. In this case, a new count should begin. As we learned and explained in previous lectures, the secondary blood attribution period is the period in which a blood specimen must be collected for a secondary blood infection to be attributed to a primary site infection. This includes the infection window period combined with the repeat infection time, time frame. It's usually ranging from 14 to 17 days in length depending upon the date of event. Now, moving on to county criteria. Before we start explaining uh, the types of uh, county, just remember that the date of event is the first element used to meet the urinary tract infection criteria occurred for the first time within the seven-day infection window period. Now, moving on to type 1, which, is, uh, which refers to symptomatic urinary tract infection associated with a catheter for at least three days or reinserted catheter or removed within one calendar day. This criteria typically involves uh, two other elements, which is the involvement and the presence of uh, clinical sign symptoms, such as fever, suprapubic tenderness, or pain, cost of vertebral angle pain or tenderness, and other sign and symptoms that are mainly present upon the removal of the catheter. These include the urinary urgency, urinary frequency, and dysuria. In addition to that, the other uh, element is the laboratory evidence of bacteriuria in a positive urine culture, not more than two species, with the amount of uh, more than uh, 10 to the power of 5 colony-forming units per milliliter, as we discussed earlier. So, SUTI2 or symptomatic urinary tract infection type 2 is exactly the same as type 1 with some minor differences. The first difference is the age. The age here in this type is one year of age or less. The second difference is the uh, there are some additional sign and symptoms because of the age. These sign, additional sign and symptoms are usually observed in uh, infants such as hypothermia, apnea, bradycardia, and vomiting. Other sign and symptoms are exactly the same as type 1, the one that we just discussed. The third type is called abuti. Abuti refers to 
asymptomatic bacteremic urinary tract infection, which can occur in patients with or without urinary catheters. In this type, we it's asymptomatic, so we don't have any sign of or symptoms. The other or the additional elements are laboratory evidence. The second element is having a positive urine culture with no more than two species of organisms, at least one of which is a bacteria equals or more than 10 to the power of 5 coliniforming units per milliliter. Now pay attention to this uh, third element, which is having a positive blood culture that is matching the urine culture. Another important thing to note that uh, patients who are uh, older than 65 uh, years of age may have a fever and still meet the apoptotic criteria. And this is because elderly patients may have uh, fever for non-specific causes. So we don't uh, take uh, fever in into account. The secondary bloodstream infection caused by cauti. So we just discussed that uh, one of the uh, apoptotic elements is having a matching blood culture to the urine culture. In cases of type 1 or 2, if a patient, for example, is meeting the criteria for type 1 and is having additional positive blood culture that is matching the urine culture. In this case, we consider this, uh, and of course, is uh, occurring during the attribution period. In this case, we consider it as secondary bloodstream infection. However, if it's not matching the urine culture, so if we had identified an, uh, another bacteria, then we consider it a primary bloodstream infection and not secondary bloodstream infection. Let's move to the calculation of cauti rates and uh, urinary catheter uh, utilization. The collection uh, process of data for cauti must be manually and daily. Patient days and urinary catheter days should be collected at the same time every day for each location performing surveillance to ensure that the different collection methods do not result in device days being more than patient days. Here is a screenshot of the uh, denominator uh, data collection form. Any uh, form presented in this lecture is from uh, the GDIBC website. Now let's dive into the process of surveillance in regard to CAUTI. It includes uh, several steps. The first step is to collect all positive cultures daily from the micro lab. Second step is to prepare a line list of patients' data admitted in the ICU. Third step is to document all devices attached to the patients, including the type of device, date of insertion, and date of removal. Fourth step is to assess, and this is by going to the ICU and checking all the admitted patients with devices and those with positive cultures, and of course assess for any signs or, or symptoms. Fifth step is to review the patient files for written records of lab charts for analysis or other microorganisms in the sites. Sixth step is to evaluate, and this is by reviewing if CAUTI criteria is met or not, with approval from the head of infection control. The seventh step is to record, of course, if CAUTI criteria is met by filling a surveillance form for the CAUTI event and to be signed by the infection control director. Last step is to report all county events recorded must be reported to the regional health cluster monthly for the health associated infection reporting and this is uh, to calculate the rate. Regarding county analysis, the county rate is calculated by dividing the county events over the urinary catheter days multiplied by 1,000 and the urin uh, urinary catheter utilization ratio is calculated by dividing the urinary catheter days over the patient days. Both of the rate and ratio can be stratified by the location such, a, such as different wards or uh, ICUs. For county standardized infection ratio, it can be calculated by dividing the observed county events over the expected county events. The observed county events are actually the number of detected county.
whereas the expected or predicted number of cauti as the number of urinary catheter days multiplied by the cauti benchmark uh, rate and here you can use any benchmark you want for example you can use the local MOH benchmark the NHSN benchmark or the GCC benchmark divided by 1000 note that the number we get is important here if it's lower than one this means that the calculated rate is lower than the benchmark if it's uh, equal to one this means that the calculated rate equals uh, the benchmark if it's more than uh, one it means that the calculated rate is higher than the benchmark the calculation of the indwelling urinary catheter standardized utilization ratio follows the same steps of the previous equation we will divide the observed catheter days over the expected catheter days. An important thing to note is that the, this ratio can be calculated only if the number of expected catheter days is equal or more than one. If it's less, we can calculate it. Same as the previous um, uh, equation, it can be calculated only if the number of expected county events is one or more. Let's move to the last part of the presentation, which is cauti prevention. So, daily assessment of uh, catheter necessity is critical to prevent unnecessary catheterization and to reduce the cauti risk. We have to always avoid catheterization if we can. We have to minimize the urinary catheter use and duration of use in all patients to also remove catheters as soon as possible and to look for, for uh, alternatives if available and suitable, of course, uh, to the patient. So what are the proper techniques for urinary catheter insertion? We have to always perform hand hygiene immediately before and after the insertion to ensure that the only well-trained persons who know the correct technique of aseptic catheter insertion and maintenance are given this, uh, this responsibility to insert the urinary catheters using aseptic technique and the sterile equipment such as sterile gloves, drapes, sponges, and an appropriate antiseptic solution for the periurethral cleaning and a single-use packet of lubricant. You can uh, appreciate a picture of the uh, lubricant here. Uh, we will also use an aqueous or alcohol-based surgical site disinfectant solution, uh, such as chlorhexidine, to disinfect the insertion site prior to the insertion uh, process. Continuing on the proper techniques for urinary catheter insertion, we have to properly secure the indwelling catheters after the insertion to prevent any movement or uh, urethral retraction. To consider using the smallest possible bore catheter consistent with good drainage to minimize any bladder nicking or urethral uh, trauma. If we are using the intermittent catheterization, we have to perform it at regular intervals to prevent the bladder over distension. And if we are using the ultrasound bladder scanners, we have to ensure that the um, equipment is adequately cleaned and disinfected in between each patient. Here's a picture of the setup equipment on sterile field. Some of the equipment are uh, present here, which, uh, which are the uh, sterile gloves, the aqueous solution, local anesthetic gel, catheter bag, absorbent pad, uh, sterile uh, receiver, the catheter itself, the sterile drape, and the cotton cotton balls. Okay, so after we uh, explained the proper techniques for the urinary catheter insertion, each healthcare facility should have a system for documenting the following information and the patient record, of course. Uh, this includes the indication for the catheter insertion, the date and time of catheter insertion, the type and size of the catheter, the amount of water used to inflate the balloon, and of course the name of healthcare worker who inserted the catheter. Once the catheter is inserted and in place, ongoing maintenance is essential for preventing cauti. 
and this is by maintaining a closed urinary drainage system and avoid unnecessary manipulation of the catheter and to also ensure the catheter tubing remains unobstructed and secure to prevent uh, accidental dislodgement or trauma. However, in some cases, the uh, catheter may be obstructed. If, if uh, obstruction happen, we need to change, of course, we need first to identify the cause and then to change the catheter. We can also use some catheter maintenance solutions, which are typically acidic washout solutions to help with the uh, obstruction, especially in uh, recurrent obstruction cases. The process of collection of urine specimens is done using clean port with an antiseptic, clamp tubing if no urine is in, uh, in tubing, and we collect it from the sampling port and never from the drainage bag. This slide summarizes what we just uh, explained regarding the uh, cavity prevention on the insertion and the maintenance process. Here are some posters from the surveillance section and the GDIBC websites, including the uh, county prevention of the insertion and maintenance bundles. These are the urinary catheter insertion and maintenance bundle forms that, are, that must be filled by the healthcare worker. In addition to implementing protocols for catheter insertion and maintenance, it's crucial to prioritize education and training for healthcare staff because the proper education will ensure that the, all team members understand the rationale behind county prevention strategies and how to effectively implement them. The education and training may be done by develop, the development of periodic training programs that cover all aspects of county prevention including the catheter insertion, maintenance, handling any complications, and daily review protocols. We can also implement the competency assessment and performance evaluations and give the feedback to identify any areas for improvement and prov provide targeted trained, uh, training as needed. And uh, education at the orientation for the new staff with the regular education of healthcare workers is also recommended. Here are the uh, county criteria checklist simplified. Including all three types. As a conclusion of this presentation, effective county surveillance is important for patient safety. Utilizing these standardized criteria ensures accurate surveillance and infection prevention. The adherence to prevention bundles further enhances our efforts emphasizing proactive measures to reduce the county cases. Here are some important QR codes. The first one is the GDIBC website, the surveillance department. You can scan it for more education materials. Second one is a WhatsApp group called the Surveillance Training Hub. You can join for educational sessions done weekly. Every Wednesday, we have a one hour uh, session, which is scenario based. We send a scenario with the multiple choices and you can answer it. Third one is uh, the strategy of county called the county out of nation or caution strategy. You can scan it for more inf information about this, uh, this strategy. Uh, thank you so much. I hope everything uh, was clear. See you, inshallah, in our discussion session with some um, scenario-based questions.